Our hot topics, each of our hosts brings a hot topic they want to share with you. Flyer shenanigans, and our panel will talk about it for a bit until time is up. And then we'll go to our audience for questions and comments. So make sure you're talking to us in all of our threads. We're going to listen to your comments and questions. We're going to share, and it should be fun. All right. So, Liz E, let's start out with your topic. There's a big old controversy with these busts in the White House. Is this a truth, lie, or is this shenanigans? Busts. It's shenanigans. And we're not talking about, like, you know, good busts, not the Uber busts. <laughs> <laughs> about, uh, you know, actual ceramic busts that, you know, people, little statues and things like that. Um, the Brits ought to be ashamed of themselves, especially after all the love Americans have given them over the show Bridgerton. So the day after, well, after um, Joe Biden, President Biden, um, inauguration last Wednesday, he got to work in the White House in the Oval Office. And one of the first things he did was remove a bust of Winston Churchill from the Oval Office. Now, for those of you who are not that familiar with Winston Churchill, he was the the former prime minister of the United Kingdom of Britain led them through um, World War II. Both he and FDR kind of worked hand in hand during World War II. And so he is seen as probably one of the most famous Brit outside of the monarchy, but also he's like the great white hype in Britain, okay? And so for whatever reason, the Brits use that as a, a um, idea, they have this idea that we owe him some type of homage, some type of, you know, flair here in the States. And so the bus that was in the White House, it's been there for several decades. It's actually on loan from Britain. Mm -hmm. um, so when Obama took office in 2009, January 2009, he took the bust out of the Oval Office, replaced it with the bust of Martin Luther King, Jr. But he didn't take it out of the White House. He just put it somewhere else in the White House. And even then, the Brits had a fit. Like that, like that Brit fit. And so back then, current um, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, back then, he had a lot to say about um, Obama removing the bus from the Oval Office. So he said at, the, at that time in 2016, um, 2017, he was the mayor of London. And he wrote in a piece, he said, the Park Kenyon Obama may have removed the bus because he harbored an ancestral dislike of the British Empire, of which Churchill had been such a fervent defender. So for whatever reason, these people the Brits really have their panties in a bunch over Winston Churchill and this bust. And so it made a lot of headlines in Britain on Thursday, on Friday, about how we snubbed the Brit, how Biden snubbed the Brits, how, you know, the new administration is ungrateful, that they need to go and brush up on their history a little bit about who Winston Churchill was and what he meant to not only Great Britain, but to the world, um, moving forward, trying to um, defeat Hitler during mm -hmm. World War II. So my question to the panel, first and foremost, is this a, should this be seen as a snub? Is this a big deal? Would it have offended you? Let's start with Robbie Rock. Yes. I see it as a, it's know, a transition. Canada was a British colony, right? Yeah, and actually, uh, with my story, we still have some ties to the crown. Yeah, yeah that's so, the queen. You have the queen on your, uh, you still have the queen in your currency, correct? Um, yeah, absolutely, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't see the removal of the bust as a snub. It's a transition. It's time for change. And I, he replaced this with uh, Cesar Chavez, if I'm not mistaken. And Chavez has been really an inspirational individual uh, as far as supporting low-paid farmers, workers, those who are seeking better living conditions. Um, and I think that that's more representative of what America needs right now. Is, and I think it's more in line with what Biden's values are as opposed to supporting a wartime president or prime minister who was great in his own time, absolutely. But if people are that upset about an artifact that is on loan, then return the artifact. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, 
I feel like I I wouldn't consider it a snub. A snub is something that's kind of like like a snub at the Grammys. It's like the artist deserved it. So they're kind of like saying that it deserves to be there, but it's on loan. So I just feel like they're taking it personal. Not all of the Brits also, um, Liz. I know it was like the right wing. I didn't even know that was a thing in, in the UK too. Like there's a whole different side, but it's only certain um, political people in Britain in the UK that feel that way. Um, but I think that it may just be a personal thing. I de it's definitely not. Um, it def it definitely isn't a snub. Basically, I think that the Brits are kind of taking it too personal, personally. Yeah. and it is time for yeah, they're, it. Melodramatic. Like, right. they're melodramatic, especially in their tabloids. Like yeah. you know, if you sneeze the wrong way, it makes the oh, front page true. of yeah. this tabloid. So, Neo. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, first of all. Who are they to say where we're supposed to put anything anyway? Um, but if I'm being honest, it's, this is just stupid. People looking for something to complain about. I mean, yeah. there's so many more important issues that we need to address. Um, I mean, who honestly cares about these busts anyway, other than apparently the Brits? You know, uh, now back when Obama took over, I get it because, you know, it was something to talk about when he replaced it with MLK. I mean, on both sides, there was something to talk about. Um, because of the significance of the change. But with COVID, people dying, Trump era over, I could care less about these stupid busts, if I'm being honest. He could move the bus any way he wants. I mean, he could put it in storage. He didn't even do that. I, I don't know. Did he put it in storage? Do we know if he put it in storage? Or I think, no, I think, it's still displayed, right? I think like Obama, he just moved it to another area right. within the White House. Who, who, yeah. who's, who's to say what he need, he's supposed to look at Every time he's in the Oval Office, if he wants to look at Cesar Chavez for inspiration, why can't he look yeah. at Cesar Chavez? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Who, who are the Brits to say what need, where this bust needs to be? I mean, it's not like when they gave the bust away, they said, hey, we're giving you this bust so you can put it in the Oval Office. If it's not there, we're going to be upset about it. But really, who cares? <laughs> That's hot. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and maybe that's not Biden's like hero. Like maybe he wants to be right. inspired by something else. Uh, that's where he does his his important work. So if he doesn't want to see Churchill, so what? I mean, personally, yeah. two things. One, I think, like I said before, I think the Brits have a lot of nerves. Um, even if it was just a small faction, but it still made a lot of headlines um, yeah, in London. Um, but I think, you know, they have a lot of nerve. If you brush up on your history a little bit, the Brits burned down the White House in 1814. So you should be um, thankful that we even, we even no. have. Yeah, I'm sorry, you burned down the White House in 1814? Canadian? Yeah, we, the Canadians did that under the British flag. But we did that. <laughs> But it's okay. Again, we love the we love the way you repainted it. it the white is we, beautiful. Can we, can we get that blame? Can we get that blame Canada? Oh, you got it. Yeah. Blame, where is it? Okay. No, yeah. hey, yeah. <laughs> but no. But if you if you go no if you go back to history, Rob B. The there was a night in 1814 where the British um, took over Washington D.C. and they burned several government buildings, including the White House. Um, and so one, they, in my opinion, we shouldn't be hyping them that much, but let's talk about Winston Churchill for a second. Mm. Winston Churchill, I've always been fascinated by the idea that Americans in particular find him to be this great iconic figure. Winston Churchill was a racist. Yes, he led through, he led Britain, Great Britain through World War II, which, mm -hmm. you know, as the prime minister, he's supposed to do. He's supposed to protect his country. However, he hated black people. Mm -hmm. He hated Indians. He, yeah. And when I say Indians, I mean, you know, people from the country Indigenous? of India. Oh, he, oh, he, India. Okay. He, he hated Indians um, from India. He hated other Asians. And so let me just read you a couple of quotes that um, Winston Churchill made about people, non-white people in other countries. So at one point he said that he hated people with slit eyes and pigtails. So I would imagine he would have been, would have been talking about at that time, um, people in the Chinese government, in, in China particularly. Um, to him, people from India were the beastiest people in the world next to the Germans. 
He admitted that he did not really think that black people were as capable or as efficient as white people. So in 1943, when then U.S. Vice President Henry Wallace challenged him on that notion, Ch Churchill, who, you know, was a big drinker, so I'm not going to fault him for being a drinker because some of us like, you know, to taste vodka or bourbon or whatever. No, we're not calling but, names. We're not calling names. But he said that he... <laughs> He said, why would he apologize about being a great Anglo-Saxon and having superiority that with that superiority, superiority that they were better than the common non-white man? So I, I always, you know, when people try to hype up Winston Churchill, I'm always fascinated by that. I'm like, well, maybe they just know about um, his wartime presence. Mm -hmm. In World War Two, but they don't know about this other it. side. That's not, to say, that's not to say that there haven't been racist U.S. presidents, because we all know there have been. There have been U.S. presidents, our founding fathers owned slaves, but we are in the 21st century now where we are calling these people out. So to hear a lot of Americans, you know, hype up, um, I believe John Harbaugh, University of Michigan football coach hypes up Winston Churchill whenever he gets a chance. And I'm like, so I guess you're not going to have an Indian football player on your team, huh? <laughs> All right. Liana Jones says, teach, Liz, teach. Uh, George Fournier says uh, to Rob B, uh, as far as the Canadians, we sure did <laughs> take it down the White House. <laughs> we have some bliss going we together with the Brits. Rob B, why we have you on our show? Why we blame <laughs> taking you? Taking down our the White House. <laughs> Because I'm your token Canadian that you can blame. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, have to be, I have to for one of the future shows. I have to um, give Neo a copy of the Robin Williams performance. I believe it was at the Oscars when he did Blame Canada. Because um, that was the first time. I didn't really watch a lot of South Park back then. But that was the first time that I saw it. And I was in tears cracking up laughing. <laughs> Uh, Mike Winter says, also, the right wingers lost their mind for Chavez and said that he should have an, um, uh, that instead Biden should add an American hero. Um, but I guess they consider Churchill's whiteness American. But those same white wingers, right wingers, will be the first to put on a sombrero and have a beer on Cinco de Mayo, not even knowing yep. the true nature or what the history of Cinco de Mayo. So y'all can shut it too. Y'all can shut it too. Pick up Kevin, a damn book. Kevin Thaxon said Margaret Thatcher is way better than Churchill. <laughs> Interesting thought. All right, so that's it for that hot topic.